when I was a little kid, I had always had a fascination with magic and sorcery. I had always had an affinity for the Sorcerer's Apprentice segment in the Fantasia movie and always wondered what it would be like to wield such power. The full force of the cosmos at your disposal. Anything would seem possible. One can only dream. When I was a child, I became familiar with the old tale of the Winter Warlock, a supposed magical adept who lived in the space between the worlds. He would be able to go in between dimensions on command and could manifest anything that he desired. His ability knew no bounds, his ambition no end. And yet, or it had it that he chose to remain in his own specific realm in which he could manifest all that he desired, with no interest in the realm of mortal men. Even though he himself had once been one, some would contend that it wasn't true, and that he lived among the mountains, just outside of town, coming and going as he pleased, whichever was factual or whichever was pure legend. The man had casted a shadow upon the region of which there was no escape from the influence of his legend. It was said that he gathered wayward souls in this world to feed upon their life force. But others say he's trying to rescue a long lost love. Once when I was a child, one Christmas Eve I made a wish for snow and for everything that I could have possibly wanted for gifts, and to be cured of the cold that I had. I had already left milk and cookies out for Santa, and had said a prayer for snow, gifts, and to be cured. Just then I had noticed a strange, tall, brooding man dressed in black, thick fur, near my window, just outside, sharp, hawk-like features, with long black hair and thick black, and a thick black beard. The man's cold blue eyes stared down at me, his thick, dark eyebrows focused on me. Then, the ominous figure's face started to warm, eventually giving in and giving me a warm smile. He lifted his hand against the window. I looked lifted mine to meet his, and felt warmth coming through the glass. Then he floated off, drifting away into the night. Through my second story window I began to see snow fall from the sky, and saw a sudden flash of light into the sky, and then dark again. That night I dreamed of an, in an incredible far off land. A magnificent winter world covered in snow and ice, in which all sorts of fantastic things happened. But a dark cloud of smoke began to form over the horizon, engulfing one of the peaks. The cloud formed into a large, black demonic skull. The black mist came straight toward me, opening its large mouth and attempting to swallow me. A flash of light, and I awake. It's Christmas morning. I get out of my bed, and I suddenly notice that I'm no longer sick. I look out the window and see snow on the ground, about six inches or so, and with a slight snow flurry still falling. That morning I got everything that I had possibly wanted for Christmas. My parents looked on in warm delight as I rampaged through the holiday wrapping paper and boxes. Ah, the joy, the wonder, the amazement. Everything was right. The being. God, he were looking. Well, whatever had granted me my wish for Christmas, and I would be forever thankful. Till one Christmas, things took a turn towards the more unconventional side. It had been nearly twenty years since the evening, and I had all but moved on with my life. 
I know how to girlfriend, a career, assets, and all of the responsibilities that came with adulthood. A great many winters came and went, but there was something different about this one. My lady had found something in the mountains, something interesting. It was a stone with ancient runes inscribed on it, which is odd considering that we had no known records of Norse conquests and exploration this far south. But the stone was ancient, hundreds, possibly thousands of years old. I went to go have it analyzed by a linguist who specialized in ancient languages, but he said that the dialect was far too primitive and ancient for his expertise. I had to try to get some second opinions on the stone, and an anthropologist that I had just happened to know had a connection with to someone in the Smithsonian, who might be of some help. So we took some photos of the stone and emailed it, them to the guy. The inscription roughly translated as, A dark sun, a dark one, a forever winter, shall never, never wither. Pretty vague. A sort of cryptic, prophetic warning. As to what? Well, that's anyone's guess. Christmas Eve had come upon us once again, and I was at home with my girlfriend and the rest of my family. We had dinner. I opened a few presents, but not too many. I began to tell wintertime stories of all sorts. Then it's my turn. So I recount the incredible experience I had with the dark figure back when I was a child. It was the first time that I had relay, relayed the experience to others, and everyone was shocked, dumbfounded. My mom and my sister tried to convince me, everyone, that I was joking. But no. I maintained that what I experienced was real. Some laughed, others rolled their eyes, but my girlfriend gave me this gentle and reassuring gaze. She actually believed me. I envision, envision myself over a frozen landscape, nearly the polar opposites of the one that I witnessed as a child. Dark, cold, unforgiving, nasty. Again, I see the dark skull cloud. Only this time it's much larger and more menacing. The mouth opens, and etern eternity's worth of snow and ice come barreling through towards me. The freeze, the cold, the death, absolute. No movement, no heartbeat, no life, no energy, nothing. Frozen solid. Suddenly I awake. I shake my head, wondering what had just happened. I'd never experienced anything remotely like that before. Frozen alive, paralyzed. The depth of the cold couldn't be described. The sensory and nerves just went numb. I couldn't even think, hardly. Almost as if someone clicked a button and put my body on shutdown. I shake my head once more. God, that was weird. I get up to meet everyone in the living room. Everyone's seated on the couch. The chairs were on the floor. Just waiting for me to arrive so that the unwrapping of gifts can occur. The snow is really coming down outside. The wind is starting to pick up and it's Nearly completely overcast. Not quite blizzard conditions, but not exactly something you would want to go out walking in, either. Everyone's having a joyous time. Everyone loved what they got, and I, it, it was just about time for breakfast. Until something strange started to happen. The wind velocity went from around 15 to over 100 miles an hour in a matter of seconds. It became dark outside and snow became incredibly heavy. The power went out. The windows gave out as well as the roof. Snow and ice came pouring in, engulfing all of us. Pitch black. 
as though an avalanche had come over the entire planet and landed right in our house. Steamrolled. I went black for a moment. Then I awoke to the sound of rustling through the downed walls and windowsills. A soft touch of light snow begins to saturate my face. I open my eyes to the sight of an open canopy and open window sills, accentuating the glow a glowing, almost twilight-esque sky, the dark black sun that was completely eclipsed by the moon. Almost a pale glowing blue, not only to the sky but to the entire landscape. What remained of the house, laid frozen, barren. A mere shell of its former glory. And then, I noticed that my family are nowhere in sight. Where the hell did they go? I wondered to myself. My mom, my father, my sisters, my girlfriend, my brother-in-law, my nieces. They're all gone. Vanished. Disappeared. The pale blue ice and frost now remains in their stead. I look around frantically, panic-stricken, trying to get over, get my wits about me and trying to plan my next move. I shout out for help. Hello? Is anyone out there? I yelled. Hello? I shouted again. I hear a long, low howl off in the distance. Very low. I know that wolves were fully capable of howling low, but this sounded... Well, bigger. What was weird is that there hasn't been a single wolf ever sighted in this area before. Ever. Just then, I could hear one of my neighbors calling out to me. Ben, was that you? They called. Yeah, I'm here. I answered. What the hell's going on? What happened? This is all so... strange. I don't know. I honestly have no idea of what the hell just happened. I've never heard of anything like this before, ever. Yes, neither have I. Where's everyone else? Have you tried contacting the EMTs, the police? Where's the rest of your family? No, the power's out. And my cell phone won't work. As for my family, I have no idea. At one minute, I'm having a great time with them here in my living room, and... The next minute, they're completely gone. My house is destroyed. Oh, my cell is out too. And so is my power. I think the entire block might be out. How's your family? I asked. They're good. They're in the house. I have a fire going. That's a good idea. Don't know when the power is going to be back on, so you might... As well, keep yourselves warm in the meantime, I said. Do you know what the, that howling was earlier? Asked Larry. No, and I'm not so sure if I want to find out. This whole thing is just so off. Yes, well, you look cold. Come on inside. The fire is quite nice. All right, I answered. I accepted the offer and warmed myself up next to the fireplace. We were discussing our next course of action until we began to hear the howls again. What is that? said Larry. I don't know, I answered. The howling gets closer. We shoot a concerned look at each other. And then another howl, this time much closer, practically on top of us. And then the sound of tapping on the doors and windows begins. Larry and I shoot another stunned look at each other. Larry, what's going on? Asks his wife. And then, sudden chaos. The doors and windows bust open simultaneously, accompanied by a series of roars and growls, barreling into the house. I only hear Larry and his wife scream once before seeing a blur of a large black hand coming toward my face before blacking out. I awake. <laughs> Only this time, I find myself somewhere else. The snow is long, no longer pale blue. It's now sugar white. 
light white snow falls. And I realize that everything is either white of a type or of clear color. A clear silver. Yet there's something beyond. Yet the snow is still falling. Then I realize that I'm slowly being sucked down into the snow. Almost like quicksand. First my feet and ankles. And then my shins. And then my knees. I struggle, but the grip of the unseen force cannot be undone. I'm being sucked down into a focal point. A tight focal point. Almost as tight as a pen. I suddenly feel bones and muscles contracting, stretching, beyond my comprehension. I'm being sucked down into the pen hole. Bones crunching. Muscles and ligaments tearing. I scream. The pain is not of this world. I'm sucked through the tube. And I black out. And awake in a place covered with pale blue snow and ice. The howl of a light wind. The barren. Not barren. There's tall black series of spires rising just beyond some ridges and valleys of ice and rock I hear a howl in the distance ah not this shit again I mutter I look around trying to devise a plan nothing but mountains and glaciers. I start to run, but the snow wraps around my legs, capturing me. I can't move. Another how. I begin to see black figures coming towards my direction. The creatures come upon me. Three enormous wolf-like creatures come towards me, circling, their glowing amber eyes staring intently at me. One stands up on its hind legs and begins to reach out with its hand. Not a paw, mind you, a hand. With claws over three inches in length. I'm pulled up by the back of my coat and gently placed into the mouth of the creature. I'm taken to the castle which ends up being in the middle of a valley. I'm dropped off just outside the entrance. I have a look around me. And I can see pillars of ice with people frozen inside of them. What in the... I say to myself. Trophies, my dear Benjamin. Trophies, serving as a reminder of my conquest of the wicked earth realm. The voice said. I stand motionless. Silent. This realm and the earth realm are right next to each other. Everything that happens in the Earth realm is manifested in this reality. For eons, I have sought refuge in this realm. Cast it out from my village for my abilities. I had managed to craft myself an ideal existence in this realm. And now, the filth of the Earth has begun to pollute this place. Leaving me no choice but to invade the Earth in order to maintain the balance to my home and to myself. I was once joyous in giving. I even granted you a Christmas wish back when you were a child, but my heart has grown cold and cruel, growing more and more at one with the dark and the cold. Beasts and creatures of darkness to serve me and accompany me. My powers have in turn grown, thunders the voice. I see a vision of the earth being frozen over, with all life being exterminated, torn apart by wolves, devoured by ice dragons, conquered by goblins and orcs. They're cleaning out the trash for me, uttered the voice, and the ones who I find tolerable have the privilege of having me feed off of their frozen life force for all of eternity. I'll use the earth as a launching pad for 
exploring and conquering other worlds. A giant crystal ball rises from the snow. See for yourself. I see my family frozen in pillars of ice, world being covered in a pale blue snow and ice, the sun blotted out from by a black moon. Hellish monsters feeding upon all of those who survived the initial freezing. Screams of agony, suffering, desperation, death. The howling of the wind. All life shall perish and will be re-engineered by me. Where is my family? I shout. Come and find out, the boy stared. The drawbridge lowers, opening up to the dark yet surprisingly warm abode. I go across the bridge and into the castle. The parlor is alive with old statues and artwork. Then I hear my name being called faintly. I begin to go up a massive staircase. Again, I hear the faint call of my name. Ben. I continue to go up the staircase and into a side room. Nothing. But then I move into a much larger room. A large black throne dominates the room. On the wall hangs an enormous mirror. A black mirror. I am compelled to take a seat on the throne. I'm blinded by an incredible flash, and then, then somewhere else, I'm somewhere else. A frozen lair, bodies, frozen bodies and pillars of ice. Ben. A faint voice still summoning me. Sarah, I mutter. Ben. I go through the pillars of frozen souls, searching. Then I finally find her. Frozen solid, but still with some life left. I put my hands against the ice. Sarah, I whisper. Icicles shoot through both of my hands and my feet. I scream in agony. I'm, tra I'm trapped right next to the pillar. A dark phantom approaches, laughing. <laughs> and now you're mine. I look into Sarah's eyes and there's a still, steady, peaceful confidence that I've never seen before. A chilling feeling, sharp and sudden, goes into my side. The phantom is driving a large sickle into my ribcage. And now, you're mine forever. But the love, the peace, the passion. It's too much for the cold to hold off. An actual fire begins to blaze and all of us, the ice starts to melt. The sickle is going through my hands and feet. The sickle going through my ribs, the ice pillars, and the whole landscape. The phantom disappears. My family is back. All the people frozen are alive, and Sarah is free as well. We embrace and we kiss. A piercing scream fills the air. An indescribable monstrosity charges toward us. Suddenly, we're back in the castle. The black lion-like creature charges, roaring in rage. It realizes that it can't touch Sarah and I. It shoots the coldest recesses of hellish snow and ice ever bestowed, to no avail. An icicle forms into the palm of my hand, sharp, nearly a foot long. The earth is mine, a voice thunders. Come and get it, I snicker. The entire pride of the beasts appear in the room, circling, surrounding Sarah and I, grunting and growling. They snap their jaws in anticipation. Feast on their flesh, a voice compels. They all pounce at once simultaneously. The icicle in my hand grows to immense proportions as I decapitate all of the beasts in one smooth stroke. 
their bodies reformed and regroup into a single solid mass. A black serpent-like blasphemy that dwindles and boggles the imagination. One final lunge. I behead the filth with one swoop, and somehow I was able to burn away the body, making sure that it went rematerialize. Everything catches fire. Sarah and I make it out into the valley. The entire landscape begins to melt. We kiss for one final time. Then, I awake. It's in the middle of the night. Sarah is asleep by my side. I relax. It's the night of Christmas Eve. I'm home and everything is back to no. Lo and behold, the same dark figure that I saw as a child is hovering right outside my window. He stares at me. And then Sarah. And then back at me. He gives a deep, kind grin of gratitude and thankfulness. And fades off into the winter night.